Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to Pete's Plastic Playground. Here we are uh, getting towards the middle of January 2023 now and uh, it certainly is pretty parky today. <laughs> it's been about minus two maximum all day long today. It's um, Sunday the, where are we, about the 20... I don't know, I've lost track of the days. Anyway, it's Sunday towards the end of January. And um, anyway, just um, another episode to say hello. I think this is video number 70. And um, thank you to all of those that um, engaged in the last video about the Airfix releases for the forthcoming year. Um, my annual quest for the Airfix catalogue is done. And um, interestingly, despite the fact that I visited a good few model shops including my local model shop which is only about five minutes walk from here none of them had the catalogue in stock and um, last uh, Thursday I think it was yeah Thursday evening I took my lad over to um, Bracknell to um, do something that he wanted to do in the uh, the video game store and um, I nipped into WH Smith and there it was on the uh, on the shelf with all of our favourite magazines, Airfix Model World and Scale Military Modeler and so on and so forth. There was the Airfix catalogue for 2023. So the quest is, is, is done. I've got it. Um, I don't know why Airfix don't send them out to the model shop sooner, but um, there we are. So it's here on the bench. I'm not going to go through it page by page because A, it might spoil it for those that, um, that you know, want to look at it in detail when they get their own copy and b i think there are a good few other people um that have already done a page by page where you can pause the um where you can pause the video and look at it in your own time um I should, i'll open a couple of pages just to look at the pictures with you um especially the fairy gannet but um so excited about that but um first of all today i was going to talk to you about um a sort of a piece of modeling kit now um, when you're an old boy like me and your 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 old eyes are going a bit, um, an aid for seeing detail is um, is is always on your on your you sort of like your list for your workbench. Now I've used one of these quite often, um, which is great. I really like it, um, <laughs> but the lens sometimes the lens just randomly falls out. But um, yeah, so I really like the sort of headband type um, type arrangement for a magnified sight. But I went into Robert Dias in the local shopping precinct and ta-da, the magnifying glasses that actually fit over your specs. And then in addition to that, uh, if I can find the button, which is, uh, oh, there it is. There you go. Torchy the robot boy. So it's a, it's a um, illuminated magnifying um, hobby specs glasses that go over your over your regular spectacles and magnify the magnify the vision. Now I threw away the packaging, of course, as we all do, um, but I did keep the um, I did keep the little leaflet because the first pair I had to take back because once the battery died down. They wouldn't take another charge so just to just to show you what's what with these um so that's the sort of conventional spectacles really a little button there to uh turn on and then in this um little plastic pop-up cover there's a, a micro usb port so there so you actually plug them in to charge them up again and they do supply with the glasses um, a little micro USB lead, which I've lost, which you can keep in that pouch. I think it's plugged into something. And it, the, the glasses come with a handy little storage pouch anyway, so you can keep them clean. Um, so, yeah, I think um, 15, 20 quid or something like that. But um, good, um, good value. And actually, I find that they do work quite well so when you are when you are at your bench and um, you know working on a project that requires some detailed vision the um, JML Mighty Sight is uh, is the name of the item and uh, so they're effectively rechargeable magnifying um, LED glasses 
so um so anyway i thought i might share that with you in case anybody thinks wow they look good on him i think i'll get a pair myself <laughs> so there we are that's uh, item number one today um number two is i mean regular viewers will know that i've got this ongoing project to this avro lancaster in 172 scale that i haven't touched um you know it's back to work now so there hasn't been a lot of time out here um doing anything last weekend was taken up with decorating my lad's bedroom so um good old dad on that one and uh the, the back's still killing me um but that job's done now um but i want to you know that it's one of those things you know when you've got a project on going you've got to be in the mood for it haven't you and um, I'm afraid at the moment um, I want to do something else rather than the uh, rather than the Lancaster and everything that goes with it and also last time I mentioned that I was hoping for um, vintage classics um, the, the airfix vintage classics range to include the motor torpedo boat and the RAF rescue launch. Well, it didn't happen. Here's, here's hoping for another day, but I've decided to reach into the stash and pull out the Vospa motor torpedo boat that's been um, been in there for about 10 years, I suppose. Um, so I'm just gonna tilt the camera down and um, share with you the contents of the box. So uh, bear with. Okay, so there it is. Lovely artwork on the box. Try and get rid of the glare from the um, from the lovely light that, uh, that my son bought me. Uh, brilliant, evocative artwork, as always, from Airfix, from whichever um, artist it was. I, think, I don't know if this is a, uh, a Roy Cross painting. I don't know. Um, might find that out in a minute. But on the side of the box, um, there's a, an illustration there. And in the blurb it says, uh, the smallest and fastest of the operational Royal Navy craft during the Second World War. This type had four 18-inch torpedo tubes on its flushed deck. Other duties included mine laying and the delivery and collection of agents and commandos to and from the enemy coastline. So um, that's an interesting little bit there to um, add to the uh, interest of the model. So it, um, it does kind of open things up in terms of, uh, you know, what you could do if you were thinking of putting it in a diorama, for example. So um, I don't know what to do with the, with the finished one. Um, as, al as always with this model, um, or with these models, I, um, I kind of think, you know, what could we do with this? Do we do it as high speed in the sea um, and maybe try and devise a way of um, showing a fish just leaving the tube or something like that. I don't know, but um, we'll build the model and see how we get on. Um, I feel fairly lucky to have this actually because I, I believe they're quite well sought after. I think if you put this on eBay, it might go for about 30 quid or so. I don't know. So, um, talking of eBay, by the way, my lad who is 14. Um, came to the shops for me this afternoon. He bought himself a packet of Pokemon cards, pulled a card out of the pack, started screaming to the extent that I nearly crashed the car, and he, he, he um, took a card from this, this pack, apparently worth 200 quid. So it's um, he's selling it straight away, and for a, a, an investment of, um, what was it, £3.50, I think it was, for this pack of Pokemon cards, he's going to get 200 quid for just one of them. So anyway, back to Airfix, and uh, there is the contents of the bag, all nicely sealed up. Um, we've got this little selection of stickers here, which um, and they are stickers. They're um, they're not decals. They're stickers, and because I I haven't really looked in detail about um, the kit itself in any way, I don't know really what they're for. I mean, there seem to be some sort of German markings, but um, I'm going to look at the instructions and see what it's all about. And then alongside that, here's a um, a conventional set of water slide transfers. So you can um, put the number, the individual uh, number of the vessel on the hull. So um, there we are. So that's that option. And then here is um, here are the destructions. Um, oh, yeah. So straight away, I can see that the stickers offer some options in terms of mast pennants. So um, I'll have to look into um, what they specifically mean or maybe if anybody knows 
anything about them you might want to drop a little comment in the uh, in the relevant section so um anyway looks uh looks really good doesn't it looks really good with the old um completed model there um so that's that's actually in uh, in color that um illustration so it is a a very dark gray vessel <laughs> um the um Okay, the blurb on the on the instructions says the smallest and fastest operational Royal Navy craft during the Second World War, the MTB with the advantage of shallow draft and speed contributed greatly to the successes attributed to the Navy for enemy ships sunk from 39 to 45. By the end of the war, a fleet of more than 1,500 small boats was operated under the British flag. Um, kit represents a Vosper 73 foot MTB, which was developed from the company's earlier 70 foot version. Um, blah, 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 and differed externally in having four 18 inch torpedo tubes on the deck as opposed to the earlier two tube boats so um, anyway there's a little bit there to read um, in the seas around Britain a total of 269 ships were sunk with a lot for, for the loss of 17 so 76 of this type of vessel a crew of 13 was carried and the, it was powered by three Packard engines uh, delivering 3,600 to 4,050 brake horsepower, giving a speed of 34 to 40 knots. So quite an exhilarating ride, I should imagine, in one of those uh, one of those vessels, especially in a choppy sea. Um, carried a, a twin 20 mil cannon and uh, two half uh, 0.5 inch guns and twin 303 machine guns. So uh, bristling with armament as well. Uh, just to run you through the instructions there's the uh the basic hull assembly i like that because on stage one you know you actually get your boat so um you know by the time stage one's done you know what you're dealing with um and there we go through the uh various stages of building the um the wheelhouse and the uh the turret for the um or the the, the, the um what do we want to call it the um the forward mounting from that uh, from that gun on the front uh, there it is dropped onto the hull plenty of detail it seems um, you know lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of fixtures and fittings to uh, add your detail to during the uh, during the course of the build and then the last section of the actual build is on uh, on this page here so there's plenty to get your teeth into and some figures as well which is nice i remember when i built the rescue launch i thought the quality of the figures was excellent and they they've given some good thought to the poses that they were in as well i shall open the bag so we can have a deco inside i'll try not to lose anything this is a delightful moment isn't it not as profitable as my son's Pokemon cards this afternoon, but uh, just as valuable to me in my eyes. So here we are. So we have, um, put that there so that uh, it can go back in later. One, two, three, four sprues of smaller fittings. And then, wow, look at that. Look at that. That is a decent sized deck, isn't it? Let's, um... I wonder if I've got a tape measure handy. I've always got a tape measure to hand until I actually want one. No, but I'm going to guess that's a foot long. Anyway, that's a good foot long, that hull. And um, probably getting on at its widest point for three and a half to four inches wide. It's a lovely shape as well. Look at the shape of that, like a big pear drop. So um, that's the uh, that's the deck. Um, that's the, uh, I suppose you call that the keel, the lower hull. So it's interesting that you have to um, mount the sides of the hull onto the keel section, um, which looks like it's going to be a, a bit of a challenge because they don't seem to be the same shape. <laughs> uh, we'll be all right. I'm sure it'll be fine on the day. And um, actually on that note, there is a, a sprue of transparencies so that um, so that you can actually glaze the portholes in the uh, in the hull 
so um so that's that sprue there for the um for the transparent uh, for the transparent part um so there's glazing for the wheelhouse and uh and glazed portholes and uh a couple of other bits that um that should become apparent during the course of the build um yes yeah, so <laughs> i am looking forward to this enormously i really am i did see one um that a chap had built when I went to the IPMS exhibition for the Farnborough and District um, Modelers Club, um, which was held in a school at Cambly. Now, I saw it a few years ago. He'd done a lovely job of the boat. And what he'd done is mount, uh, made himself a dockside, a little bit like I did with my RAF rescue launch. And um, he had the crew um stood to attention they were being addressed by a senior officer on the quay side um you know backing onto the boat so preparing for their um preparing for their next uh their next uh mission and uh, that was that looked really nice and he'd done uh, done a really nice job at the harbour side as well and some uh, some other bits going on so there it is there's the airfix 172 scale vospa motor torpedo boat which i am going to forgive the pun launch into <laughs> you i can hear you all uh, rolling with laughter as you're watching this look at that nice little capstan wheel there and the torpedo tubes um more torpedo tubes and the uh the mounting for the uh the gun turret on the front i thought i saw that there were some figures in this but i haven't seen any on the sprues uh no there are no figures oh yes there are yes there are just seen them there they are oh crikey there's one lab with just a head so i guess he's designed to oh well, hang on there's one head so i don't know if he's designed just to look out of the top of the wheelhouse or something but um but it seems as if no I think he's broken and come off the sprue which is mighty strange there's nothing else in the bag for his uh, his torso so uh, anyway so three four decent complete figures and um, one chap with his binoculars and um, two gunners by the look of it and and just a poor guy with a head so um, there we are so that's the figures and uh, loads more decent stuff on there and a couple of stands as well but um so that's that i'm going to pop this all back in the bag now so we don't lose anything and i shall um i'll probably maybe even try and film the build now with this um my new vlogging station that um that i've got i might sort of try and make a video of uh, some or all of the build to show you so um there we are so pop that all back in the box nicely and we'll start on that soon and I shall go to sleep tonight dreaming about the uh, the build of the kit itself. Right, the Airfix catalogue. There it is, 2023. Um, if I can get that in shot there. There we are. Nice image of, um, you know, nice imaginative image of the Dam Busters um, Squadron Lightning uh, F-35 and the, uh, the um, B-3 Special. From the, from the Dam Busters, it being the 80th anniversary in this coming year. Um, so I'm going to turn straight to the page with a gannet and just tell you that my intention is that in a, a, a very um, soon to be... Um, six, uh, if I can stop tripping over my words. In a forthcoming video that I will create quite soon, I'm going to go and visit um, my local aviation museum in Woodley in Berkshire, where there is actually is a fairy gannet. OK, and I'm going to make a video of it and I'm going to take some close up pics and post it all here in anticipation of the release of the gannet so that they can be used by anybody who may feel the need for them. Um, so that's that will be coming soon as soon as i get a day where it's nice and sunny and i can get in and have a good look at the aircraft i'll go and um go and make a video take some pics and post it all here for everybody to see i think it's a fantastic aircraft and um 
and so I'm looking forward to that enormously. So that's Airfix's 148 Gannet. Um, other highlights, I mean, I've been to bed early a couple of nights and had a good look through this. Um, my favourite pages um, are always, always, always the um, the pictures of the... the oh, drop, dropped it. Uh, find the page again. Yeah, my favourite section is always the 176 armour. Look at those images. Look at those those the box art on those for that scammel tank transporter and so on and so forth. I mean that could be a, a catalogue from my childhood. But there they all are in the classics range and all available to us and uh, very 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 nice to look at. Um, good to see the old um, Bristol Bloodhound making a comeback. That's um, that's quite exciting. And uh, what in also in vintage classics, of course, we have the the fairy rotodyne there i got quite excited when i saw that was coming back and i don't know what if anybody else heard the same thing during the airfix announcement it they said that the 124 scale stuka was being reissued in an uncensored box so does that mean they're going to show it with a, a swastika on the tail controversial but it'd be interesting or whether they're going to include swastika details historical accurate accuracy is uh, is what people are after i don't mind either way myself i mean it's uh, it's all history as painful as it is ss great britain is on my list as well that would be something different to build won't it imagine doing a diorama and creating that little bit of box art brilliant so i called it ss great britain again it's not it's ss great western you know as a somebody who reveres ik brunel how can i get that so wrong so there we are um the airfix catalog is out now wh smith rather than your model shop at the moment so <laughs> there it is great well there we are um i hope you enjoyed that little look in um and uh it's uh very nice um very nice of you to uh make comments and say hello i do appreciate um you know you're taking the trouble to do that and um and and so thank you very much for, for that um i'll be back again soon as i say with um with some uh some detail on the gannet and uh some progress on that osper motor torpedo boat so in the meantime everybody from pete's plastic playground thank you for tuning in and happy modeling take care and uh see you soon bye for now